Hey y'all. Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, I'm Patrice. Thank you for stopping by. Please look at the other content. If you enjoyed that content, give it a thumbs up. And also, don't forget to subscribe. If you want to interact with me and other amazing crafters, please join us on Facebook. Our group is also Craftable Things. We would love to have you there with us. For my returning subscribers, welcome back, y'all. So today's video, we are going to be making a tumbler and we are going to take a 30 ounce stainless steel tumbler and we are going to merge that with some fabric that I picked up the other day at Hobby Lobby and we are also going to be doing the power wash method with it and it is going to turn into this beauty okay so it's a few steps it takes a little bit of time because we will be using epoxy with this and I can't wait to show y'all how I got this done. Let's get started. These are all the materials that I need right now. My cutter, my fabric, my sanding block and Mod Podge and paint. I am going to start by measuring the cup. I want to measure the width and I also want to measure the height. I do not want to waste any of the fabric so that's kind of how I start with doing these tumblers now I'm ready to cut my fabric and I'm just going to use the measurements I'm using a rotary blade to cut this fabric also it's a good idea to have an, a self-healing mat underneath while you're cutting I did not get mine out Okay, so another very important thing to do is to make sure you sand your tumbler. You want to uh, make it a little rough, not too rough, but a little rough so that when you apply your adhesive and your fabric and or even if you're using glitter, I just find that it adheres a lot better when I sand. So I'm going to sand all around it. I'm going to sand the bottom because I will be applying a piece of fabric to the bottom also. Okay, so I'm done sanding the tumbler and just to recap, I was using a 60 grit sanding block. You can find those on Amazon. And right now, all I'm doing is taking an alcohol wipe and cleaning off all of the dirt and debris from sanding this tumbler. It may not look like there's much, but there, there is and you really want to make sure that you are using a clean surface when you get ready to apply the Mod Podge to your tumblers. Now I'm going to get ready to apply the Mod Podge and I'm using a matte finish Mod Podge. You can use satin or glossy, it really doesn't matter. Uh, so I'm going to start with the bottom of the tumbler and make sure you have a paintbrush that has firm bristles. You don't want to shed bristles during this process. I'm just going to apply the Mod Podge to the bottom and then I will get ready to place the bottom piece of fabric onto the tumbler. When applying the bottom piece of fabric, I'm going to press it on and then I am also going to try to get into all of the creases at that bottom because I want to make sure it's making contact with the tumbler. Every piece of that fabric needs to be making contact with the tumbler. So that's what I'm doing now, just pressing it to make sure that it is. I am going to trim a little bit of those edges uh, from around the tumbler because I want very little of that bottom part to be wrapped on the, the front part of the tumbler. Okay, so now we are going to get ready to apply the rest of the fabric to the tumbler. And you just want to make sure that your fabric is aligned the way that you want it to be if you're not doing a fabric like this. Some fabric is directional. So I'm just going to brush on some of the Mod Podge. And as I brush the Mod Podge on, I will press the tumbler down, stretch it out to however it needs to be to fit onto the tumbler. I find it doing it this way is a lot easier than applying Mod Podge all around and then putting the fabric on. I can kind of manipulate the fabric a little bit better this way, um, take it off and reapply whatever I may need to do. All right, so 
and that's what we are going to do now and I'll just keep doing the same process painting and then putting the fabric on painting and then applying the fabric all right guys so make sure that you are smoothing your tumbler as you go and continue that process all around the tumbler making sure that it is sticking to the fabric or the fabric is sticking to the tumbler and get rid of any of those frayed edges so that you don't have that because once you put the epoxy and everything on there it will seal it but you can still see if it's some frayed material underneath so make sure you're doing that and i'm just going to keep wrapping it around and flattening it out this tumbler is tapered so it's not a straight tumbler so it's not going to line up exactly how it would if this were a straight tumbler also once you finish wrapping the tumbler you want to remove any of the excess material so i usually like to line it up edge to edge and then I have the seam where I need to be cutting and trimming. Now that I have everything wrapped I'm ready to trim away and I am just going to trim along the meeting point of those two fabrics. I'm going to try to make sure that I do not have too much overlap and I'm just adding a little extra Mod Podge here to make sure that it is nice and secure uh, the fabric is nice and secure to the tumbler and I am going to trim a little bit more off. I'm also going to make sure that I trim around the edges at the top and the bottom so that there isn't too much loose fabric onto this tumbler. So everything looks really good and now I'm ready to apply Mod Podge all around the tumbler. You should really have uh, a tumbler holder like your PVC pipe with a piece of sponge at the end or something, even a pool noodle to hold your tumbler in place so that you're not touching all around the tumbler while you're trying to glue it. However, I am going to apply a Mod Podge onto this tumbler. I'm just doing one coat because I will be doing the power wash method with this tumbler. However, you want to do at least three coats to seal your fabric because when you get ready to apply the epoxy you do not want that epoxy being able to penetrate the fabric and cause other stains in the fabric so in this case because I'm doing the power wash I'm not too worried about that but apply top to bottom make sure it's nicely coated and if you're applying more than one coat let it dry in between each coat Alright guys, so I let that one coat dry for about 30 minutes, but remember you should, if you are not doing anything else after you, you epoxy your tumbler, apply three coats of Mod Podge and let it dry in between each because you want to have a nice seal on that fabric. So we will get ready to apply our epoxy. I am using Amazing Clear Cast and you want to make sure you are using equal ratios of your epoxy so if you're doing 10 ml of part a you need to do 10 ml of part b and in between i like to stir very slowly so i'll stir part a a little slowly and then i'll stir part b and then i will mix them together but make sure you stir slowly because you do not want to create tons of air bubbles those air bubbles can be seen on your tumblers Okay, I should have made sure I stated this before. Make sure that you have on gloves. You really should have on two, uh, a full set of gloves. I just have on one. I try very hard or very to be very careful when using the epoxy, but make sure that you are protected with um, two pairs of gloves. So I'm just applying the epoxy and I'm going to apply it top to bottom. I'm also going to make sure I get the bottom of the tumbler I'm going to just keep applying it and I'm going to take my finger and go all over it and make sure there are no rough spots. When you're applying epoxy, you will feel when it's when it starts to get smooth, that's when you know that the coating is nicely coated. You should not feel the texture of the material when you're applying the epoxy. I can already see a few areas where the epoxy has penetrated the 
fabric it looks like a little bit a little stained or it looks wet underneath the the fabric and so that is why you really do want to make sure that you coat your tumbler at least three times with the Mod Podge and let it dry in between so that that Mod Podge seals your fabric so I decided to put some glitter onto this tumbler. I'm trying to get the glitter, most of it at least, onto the sunflowers. It's yellow glitter. And I thought that would be a nice addition to this tumbler. And next I'm just going to take my heat pen and kind of run it over the tumbler to get rid of some of those bubbles that I saw. And you can really just do this very lightly and it does not mess up or mess with or interact with the epoxy or anything. You just want to make sure you get your bubbles popped. I'm going to let this turn for about nine hours and then I'm going to let it set um until the next day and here i am you do not want to remove this off of your turner too soon so we are all done with that first coat of epoxy and look how beautiful that bottom is y'all i love tumblers that have something on the bottom and now all we are going to get ready to do is sand it but i wanted to show you guys so remember i was saying about how the epoxy penetrates the fabric you see that discoloration at the top that is because the fabric the mod podge had not cured properly or we did not have enough um coats of the mod podge to seal that fabric and so that's what you can be left with so if you're not doing anything else to your tumbling you're just wrapping it with the with the fabric you want to make sure you apply at least three coats of mod podge and let it cure in between each coat so that it is nice and sealed so i'm going to go ahead and start sanding i'm sanding around the edges of the tumbler right now because i want to when i have that second um layer of epoxy on top i want to make sure that nothing is able to get underneath that layer okay so i'm going to keep sanding and i'm going to sand the entire tumbler because i will be coating this again with more mod podge and i will be doing two other things i'm going to get ready to do the power wash onto this tumbler as well as place a vinyl decal on it so I'm done sanding the tumbler and now I'm just going to clean it off with a little bit of alcohol and make sure that there is nothing left, no grit or anything left onto that tumbler because especially when we get ready to place our decal on it, I want it to adhere to the tumbler as it should because we are going to coat it with that epoxy and I don't want anything getting underneath the, the decal. Now we are going to get ready to power wash our tumbler. I'm using Dawn Power Wash and I also have some Krylon Rose Gold spray paint that I will be using to get this accomplished. You also want to make sure you have your bucket of water nearby. Okay, and this bucket I usually use this with my 20 ounce but uh, 30 ounce, I don't know, we'll see. But make sure you spray a nice amount of power wash onto your tumbler. I don't really want my tumbler completely covered too much with the spray paint so I'm spraying um, a nice amount of power wash the less amount of power wash you use the more color uh, adheres to your tumbler so I just kind of want to hit my edges the rim and the bottom where some of that epoxy seeped through once you're done spraying it with your spray paint you want to dip it fairly quickly into the water so that the power wash can rinse off and all the extra paint will rinse off as well. So we're done rinsing our tumbler and I love how it came out. It looks super, super pretty. So after I finished power washing, I cut the decal with my Cricut Joy and I did a little offset inside of Cricut Design Space in order to get the look that I wanted for this decal. All right guys, so everything is cut and I just put together the decal that I'm going to use. And this particular paper was a little bit challenging getting it off of the back paper, but 
we are going to get it off and we are going to place this onto our tumbler. So this is one of the main reasons why you need to do a good sanding to make sure that there are no, if you're using glitter, there's no glitter chunks or anything that is not smooth on the cup. You want to sand that down because you want your decal to adhere to the tumbler nice nicely so that is why so I'm just going to make sure that I press this decal in as much as possible because I do not want anything to get trapped underneath I do not want any epoxy to kind of go underneath the decal because that will cause your decal to lift and it may cause some humps and bumps in your tumbler when the epoxy actually sets so that's why I um like to make sure it's sanded really nicely. All right, once all of that is done, it is time to place your tumbler onto the tumbler turner for the last time. And I'm just going to repeat the same steps that I did before with applying the epoxy to the tumbler. I am going to let this stay on the tumbler for about 24 hours. It'll it'll turn for maybe about eight hours or so, and then I will set it on the curing rack. And so it will stay there for pretty much until the next day. And once I take it off it will be nice and smooth I don't really like touching the tumbler when it's still tacky so I like for it to stay on the, the curing rack for as long as possible all right y'all so that is it we are done with our tumbler and as you can see you can mix epoxy with more things than just glitter and acrylic paint or alcohol paint you can apply your favorite patterns via fabric all right so I am loving how this turns out the power wash method pretty much covered up all of the imperfections and also y'all for my viewers who do sublimation this is also a great way to cover up those sublimation mistakes just by throwing some fabric onto your tumblers you can do this it does not matter whether or not it's a sublimation tumbler or a stainless steel tumbler this method works with all tumblers so I definitely suggest that you do something like this for those ones and, and don't throw out your tumblers but that's it for today I am loving this cup I think I am going to keep this one for myself that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please be sure to like this video if you enjoyed it. And also leave a comment below if you have any questions. I would love to answer your questions. But that's it, y'all. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time.